All right. So that being said, I would like to <clears throat> jump on to today's presentation. So uh, today, primarily, I'm going to be focusing on crashworthiness and what's the idea behind it. Uh, though we have softwares like HyperMesh to mesh the geometry, radios to solve the system, uh, today's focus is less going to be less on the software. I'll be using the software or I'll be mentioning the software just to explain the steps that you need to do. But today the primary focus is on understanding the fundamentals of crashworthiness. Why is that important? Well, oftentimes when you when you're learning to when you're when you're trying to learn CAE, people immediately jump to the application. And if you have attended our previous workshop, you know that's kind of the story that we tell. Usually when you focus only on the application, the problem is that you, you just know that application and you know only certain types of problems. In other words, you know how to click buttons. That's, that's the problem there. You do not know what's happening in the back, back end and you, know, you do not know what equations are being solved and how things are being calculated. And because of this, uh, you are less independent. When there's a new type of problem, you need some guidance. You cannot think through a solution on your own. So that is the primary aim or primary aim behind conducting this workshop. Okay. So before I move forward, I would like to ask another question. How, like how familiar are you guys with respect to crashworthiness in general? The math behind crashworthiness or say the theory behind it. Okay, beginner, all right. That's fine, thank you. No idea, just hearing this, that's fine. That's why, you know, this is an introductory level workshop, okay? How about others, guys? Again, Gautam and Nanda Kumar, thank you for your honest responses. New concept, Pratik Panda, all right. Just a little, that's fine. And no a bit, okay. Not much, but I've done analysis. <laughs> blank only definition all right that's great guys i mean that means you're doing the right thing by attending this workshop okay because this is supposed to be an introductory level workshop so shridhar is an expert so unfortunately shridhar this is an introductory level workshop so you might still be able to learn a little bit but we are not going to go into a lot of details because most of them have uh, you know most of them are beginners to this field suraj Okay, but you haven't heard of it before. All right, interesting. Okay. And Sridhar, can you tell me a little bit about your background? What is it that you do? Uh, you might have already typed it. I might have missed it. So if you don't mind, you can just copy and paste the message or just tell me a little bit about what, what you have done with respect to crashworthiness so that, you know, the other, other, other people in the audience can also learn from your experience. All right, guys. So, um, Okay, so let me get started here. Okay, so what is crashworthiness, right? So originally crashworthiness started in the aerospace in industry. If you, I mean, it might be hard to believe, but it started with the aerospace industry mainly to make sure that the structures of the aerospace components, so it can be an entire shuttle, it can be an, an entire airplane or whatever. Uh, crashworthiness basically, basically uh, relates to the study of how crash worthy a structure is. So for example, if you have a structure and say that it is going to crash at a particular uh, specification, it could be a particular speed, a particular height, whatever. Now, when the crash takes place, how safe is it for the human being who's operating that machinery? That is the general sense behind or general idea behind crash worthiness. In modern days, it's extremely pertinent to cars. So the idea is when you're driving the car, at 30 or 35 miles per hour. Okay, so that's roughly 50 to 55 kilometers per hour. What's going to happen if you crash the car, right? How is the car going to damage, going to get damaged? That's first question. How you as a passenger are going to get protected? <clears throat> and our people who are sitting in the rear seats are going to get protected. And can you actually predict if, if the crash takes place, like 100 times you crash the car at the same speed, Will you be protected all the hundred times or do you have to be lucky to get protected? Now, this entire field is called as crashworthiness. And the reason why engineers are interested in this is to basically make it 
repeatable. That is, if the crash takes place at 35 miles per hour, then the passengers should be protected at all costs. Now, again, it's not possible to guarantee protection in all scenarios. For example, if you fall off a hill, you know, there's unfortunately you might not survive. But it, but if you take the most common type of crashes that occur, right, and that you can get from data out there, right? If you look at if you look at how accidents take place, you can figure out what are the common types of crashes that take place, right? And based on that, engineers have identified certain most commonly occurring type of accidents for which they engineer the product. This entire process of engineering is called as crash worthiness. Now it can be through experiments or it can be through computer simulation, doesn't matter. The whole idea of figuring out if a car is crash worthy or not is called as crash worthiness. Mm -hmm.